Today I want to talk about some of the most well-known IDW comics. Many of you probably haven't read it because the length of this series is daunting, but that's alright. For your knowledge, More Than Meets the Eye is part of the 2005 IDW continuity written by James Roberts and is the most popular out of everything they published. It has over 50 issues and takes place after the Autobot Decepticon War ends and Cybertron is recovering. The story follows Rodimus taking a crew of 200 Autobots out on a space quest where everything goes wrong. It is considered beautiful story writing and the characters are fan favorites. You will find an abundance of memes and fan art online. The sequel to More Than Meets the Eye is Lost Light which only has 25 issues and is also written by James Roberts. Now the thing is while people adore More Than Meets the Eye, Lost Light is more heavily critiqued. I'm not going to critique More Than Meets the Eye today, although the biggest debate about it seems to be how Megatron becomes an Autobot and joins Rodimus' crew. People find it extremely unrealistic that Megatron would be so easily forgiven, and I agree with this, but this is an entire IDW continuity problem because the comics preceding More Than Meets the Eye had a Megatron do terrible things like wipe out billions of alien lifeforms simply out of hatred for organics. When it comes to story writing, I greatly admire More Than Meets the Eye. I highly respect James Roberts as a writer because he knows how to foreshadow and plant seeds. I think Lost Light isn't nearly as good because he was rushed and maybe pressured to incorporate things he didn't plan to. Things in Lost Light grate me the same way they graded many other readers, but that does not mean I don't like Lost Light. I mean, if I didn't like them, I wouldn't own all of them. <laughs> the truth is I only read all of IDW in order this year, and before that, years ago, I randomly read Windblade and Lost Light because it was what Chapters Indigo was selling. There had been an explosion of Windblade and Starscream memes, videos, and art on the internet that alerted me. So yes, I read Lost Light, the sequel, before More Than Meets the Eye. I had no clue what the hell was going on, but when I read it, I thought it was the best Transformers shit I had ever read. Do you know how gruesome Lost Light is? It is the most disturbing and violent Transformers story I had ever laid eyes on. I was just entranced by everything Getaway was doing. I had no idea who the characters were, but I didn't give a damn because I went from Transformers Prime to Autobots forcing other Autobots into shooting comatose patients and some freaky dude asking to be paid for his work in spines. Lost Light is enjoyable, but after reading More Than Meets the Eye, I understand why people don't like it nearly as much and critique it so hard. Note that the comics still have positive reviews and Lost Light is considered some of the best comics written for Transformers. Now I'll go over some common criticisms that I agree with after reading the whole series. Lost Light is very guilty for including sad for the sake of sad. Once you know the characters from War and MECI, you very easily get enraged by nearly everything that happens in Lost Light. It's the end of the series, there's no going back. You invested so much time in love, then get character deaths or sad things happening to your characters that just don't feel satisfying. Major spoilers right here, let's start with Rung. First you might not like that Rung died. Did he really have to die? Debatable. But the absolute worst thing is that for no real good reason to the plot, everyone forgets Rung ever existed. I never understood why this was the case or why Rung had to have a reason to be so forgettable to bots. Lost Light makes Rung do this ultimate sacrifice and then the entire cast forgets Rung ever existed and it's terrible, it's just sad for sad. It wasn't necessary and it really angers Rung fans. I have the same anger when Nautica forgot she was ever friends with Skits. Skits had a very sad backstory in More Than Meets the Eye and it was beautifully written with the slow reveal of his repressed traumatic memories. I love Skids, but after his death, Lost Light writes in Nautica having her grief removed, and that means her feelings for him. It doesn't help the plot at all, it's just a side story that has no other purpose but to find a way to creatively stab you in the heart. For as short as Lost Light was, it really angers me that they did side stories like this dedicated to hurting fans. Fans want to be hurt sometimes, but only if there's meaning to it. At a point, they just get upset with the series itself for doing their favorites dirty. The next example, Ratchet. Literally in the last issue of Lost Light, the characters are suddenly at Ratchet's funeral. Ratchet was slowly dying of, get this, old age. Ratchet freaking dies of old age when so many other characters are older than him. Even Drift is as old as he is. It is a random crap that makes us so angry because Drift and Ratchet were an awesome couple from More Than Meets the Eye. They even had their own adventure in Drift Empire of Stone. To just destroy the ship at the end of the continuity to make a sad ending is infuriating. 
Sad for the sake of sad, I'm really telling you. Issue 25 just dumps it all on you. Out of nowhere, at the funeral, we also have characters saying Rewind is suddenly paralyzed now. His brain got messed up from uploading too much data, and now he's stuck as a USB stick that Chrome Dome carries around. We went through all of Morden Means the Eye and just out of the blue, now Rewind and Chrome Dome can't cuddle and do all those cute things anymore. We just want them to snuggle, damn it. Why'd you have to add this after everything they went through? I'm also very bitter about so many other fast deaths. Nightbeat, Ten, Freud, and Sunder. One, I really don't like the plot where everyone accidentally gets on the assisted suicide planet called Madari. What happens there is everyone is basically in a dream, and if you achieve inner peace, you ascend to what they think is the afterlife. Except it's not, you just get killed in your sleep because the planet was a medical facility that helped terminally ill people die happy. So Ten and Nightbeat just straight up die at their happiest. The entire Knights of Cybertron quest ending up to be a dream is kind of disappointing, but not the worst, but I really just thought the offense of Lost Light were zany and all over the place. That's the feeling I get the entire time reading Lost Light. More than me see I felt so organized, everything mattered in some way. But then Lost Light jumps around and the ideas are wacky. I'll explain some of them. First one revolves around my frustration with Freud's and Sunder's deaths. So IDW had been including an idea about a greater life form, the Magnificence. You see it in Spotlight Double Dealer as well. The thing is so random in Lost Light. I don't even understand why it was there, but hey, I'm still in shock at the gross Scorponok pregnancy plot in Lost Light. There's so much jumping in Lost Light, so keep up. Anyway, Nicole wears this thing on her neck, and then gets angry and shoots lightning at three random characters and kills them. It just does it suddenly, and somehow picks the three biggest assholes in the room instead of the characters who are good. And while yeah, Freud and Sunder deserve to die, their deaths were as sudden as makeshifts in Transformers Prime. All this explains why the Morden Meets the Eye fandom just likes to completely glance over the character deaths in Lost Light. As someone in the Freud and Sunder fandom can confirm, no one pays attention to their deaths because they just suck. For the character deaths in Lost Light, I don't see anyone accepting them. I never even see people mention events in Lost Light, although people love talking about Morden Meets the Eye. The fans are so unsatisfied and frustrated that they just cannot accept the canon, but I'm totally on board with that. I take More Than Meets the Eye so much more seriously than Lost Light. Lost Light to More Than Meets the Eye feels like Robots in the Sky is 2015 to Transformers Prime fans. It's there, but we don't really accept what happens in the sequel and we pick and choose what we like. So that is that, but there are lots of side plots crammed into Lost Light that people aren't really into. I think the Scorponok creating organic Decepticons to breed and make an army really just made people want to barf. The alternate universe thing I personally didn't like either, but there isn't anything majorly wrong with it except maybe the whole Rung's final death issue. Personally, I was most upset with Midori, how everyone from all over was dragged in to be at the same place at the same time. The plot really stretched itself to get the scavengers and somehow Tailgate, who was stuck in a box on another planet, there on Midori too. The entire market trip that includes forgetting Skid's friendship annoyed me because there was also a node in Lug stumbling across an infinite. There was a concept in IDW that was thrown away very fast. The infinites are experiments meant to create Cybertronians with infinite alt modes and who can self-heal. They get decimated instantly at the end of the continuity in Unicron, so it was just another detour in Lost Light. So many detours that could have been erased to give the panel time to an orderly plot. Consider how long and detailed Morden Meets the Eye felt in the same amount of issues. Think of how much happened in issue 1 alone, the entire Delphi plot in 4 and 5, the backstory of Chrome Dome and Prowl in issue 9 and 10, the Overlord story peaking in issue 15. Even the Tyrus climax happened in the amount of time it took Lost Light to do its entire run. There is nothing in Lost Light nearly as deep as those events I just mentioned, which all happens within the first 25 issues of Morden Meets the Eye. Think about how Morden Meets the Eye would handle a side story. The first appearance of the scavengers is the setup for the DJD. We see for the first time how scary the DJD are as we meet them on page. This is important to make you horrified when you learn how the DJD massacred Rodimus' crew and for when we get to the DJD being the final bosses of Morden Meets the Eye. The scavengers also provide the reader with a Decepticon perspective when they talk about being people like everyone else, how they see Autobots as cruel and bloodthirsty. I'll be honest, as much as I liked the scavengers, when they appeared in Lost Light, they didn't feel like they were adding anything. 
I had the feels in Mortimisei eye when the scavengers learned how someone was mutilating beast formers to make them dumb animals to be sold and abused. In the end, Spinister left a note to Fortress Maximus so that the Beast Transformers could all be saved, and Fortress Maximus learned to see some Decepticons in a different way. Sure, it didn't change the greater plot, but it was a damn good deep story. That's the type of quality I felt was lacking in Lost Light. Panel time is a huge issue and I just wanted to point out my irritation of the romances in Lost Light, because romances were beautifully crafted in Mortimisei. Lost Light has romance for the sake of romance, and with that I do want to criticize a note in luck. People like these characters because their cuteness can be comforting, but I found it so frustrating that their relationship wasn't significant to the plot. You have the sense that they're just floating around stealing all the panel time to talk about themselves. With a note in luck, hardly any of the main cast acknowledges their existence or talks to them. It's ridiculous, Tailgate even smacks a note and almost kills her, and he totally doesn't notice her. They're nobodies to the rest of the cast. Actually consider if there would be a difference to the story if you just plucked a note and lug out of it. In more to meets the eye, you can't think of any couple who can be taken out because they're so woven into the events that are happening. When something bad happens to them, it affects the characters around them. Drift and Ratchet. Ratchet is pushed to the breaking point when Drift is mistreated and he leaves to rescue him. It's a huge critique against how Rodimus is running things and leads to the truth of how Rodimus was keeping secrets and had to use Drift as a scapegoat. Drift and Ratchet also come back to kick ass. Cyclonus is a raging devil with anything related to Tailgate and their dramatic relationship, which Getaway takes advantage of, moves the plot forward. It also gives Cyclonus a great amount of character growth that is satisfying to watch, but take a note and lug and you see they don't actually develop, they stay about the same from start to finish. Chrome Dome and Rewind have a dramatic relationship too that teaches us about Nemo surgery, ties into Overlord's escape and his defeats, and Rewind's return is connected to the doubled Lost Light ship story arc. Brainstorm's motivation for becoming a villain and time traveling to kill Megatron is all motivated by his love for Quark. Outside of Mortimer's CI and other IDW comics, I also see better relationships. They also take up panel time, but it feels right. RC and Aileron slowly become closer as they discuss the wrong in what everyone is telling them to do. Neil Nose doesn't appear too much, but he's motivated by grief for his murdered boyfriend. Not all relationships need to matter, such as Knockout and Breakdown just being mentioned as a couple. The issue I'm talking about is that Knockout and Breakdown didn't take all the panel time doing nothing but snuggling and shopping. That's what a note and lug do, in what is supposed to be a sequel to a series of fan favorites. So to recap, Lost Light is full of unnecessary sadness, the events feel totally random, the side stories don't matter, and none of the stories can match the depth of Mortimer's the Eye. Those are the reasons people are unhappy with this comic series. I trust James Roberts and feel like he could have done way better if he was allowed to. He's awesome because he wrote Mortimer's the Eye and was a co-writer of Less Than of the Wreckers, which is the only Phase 1 comic people ever seem to get excited about. Seriously, hardly anyone talks about the comic books that took place during the war. But that one, they do. It was metal and you can find lots of YouTube videos that are AMVs for Less Than of the Wreckers. James Roberts is my idol and I'm inspired by his slow drip strategy where he drops all the hints and slowly the reader builds the bigger picture. That's why I'm certain the faults of Lost Light could have been avoided. Even the sad stuff with Ratchet and Rewind could have been reconsidered if he had time, or maybe he was put into the mind that the story had to be incredibly sad, I'm not sure. Lost Light just has this airy feel to it, but if you want to read the most twisted shit, plunge into Lost Light, particularly issue 10, 11, and 12. Am I pregnant? Am I pregnant? Am I pargant? Am I gregnant? Am I pegnate? Help?